Well, in man-made environments, wetness are kept in designated wet spaces, dryness in dry spaces. Well, in nature, nature is not static or binary. Nature is rich and dynamic, where there's diffusion in between. Well, in architectural or interior practices, environments or the climate are desecratized into self-control function units, where the outside environment is not, outside climate is not experienced inside. Well, in our project, we use vapor as a medium to bring outside microclimates inside architecture. Because of the unique uh, characteristic of vapor, it is penetrable and also can dynamic changing throughout the time. We use it to um, visualize, we use it to modelize visibility, uh, create cooling patterns, and also create spatial patterns in a controlled manner. This is our vapor generation machine. There's four major programmable vapor forms. The first one is vapor tornado columns. The second one is vapor vortex ring. The third one is vapor wall and voxels. The fourth one is either vapor plane or vapor wall. This is vapor tornado column and vapor tornado column behind the scene. Well, to create a constant stable vapor tornado column, what you need is like a center pooling fan that like have this uh, clockwise rotation. And you also have an outer range, uh, outer rim, you also have to have a symmetry counterclockwise rotation, which is provided by, provided by symmetry uh, openings on four sides. We also try to build an adjustable prototype that you can change the parameter and see how it affects the vapor tornado shape. As a result, we found out the bigger the opening size, as long as the symmetry, the larger or wider the radius of the funnel size is. But if you are over a certain threshold, the larger the opening size will make the tornado more unstable. And also, symmetry matters. If you don't have a symmetry opening on each side, basically there will be unstable outer rim rotations and cause the tornado become very violent. We also test different ground geometry to regulate the openings of the vapor. This is how it affects the form of vapor tornado. Well, the second programmable geometry is vapor vortex ring. So how to create a smoke ring? If you're trying to like, push out a volume of smoke from your mouth, you will find out it will dissipate really fast. But to, to make one vortex ring that travel long, what you need is to follow this equation here to push out a certain amount of vapor in a certain amount of time that matches the aperture of the openings. If you can have that, then basically you are creating a rotation that is like a spinning wheel that reduces the friction, that makes the packet of vapor uh, keep, uh, keeping its own shape and momentum and strength in a long distance. This is a series of experiments uh, testing different aperture size at the, and the volume that match them. In general, the larger the aperture size, you have to have the volume that match the aperture size. And then as a result, the bigger the vortex ring is and the longer it travels. And there's a lot of interesting geometry happens in collisions. Well, this is a very, very successful collision. And this phenomenon actually happens on a symmetry process where when you push out a vapor ring, there will be a clear ring pushed inside. We also think about a product made of this kind of uh, mechanism, where you can distribute a precise packet of vapor into a designated space in the room. 
unlike conventional uh, humidifier. And if you really like wetnesses, basically this machine, this humidifier will be able to track you down and bring the wetness to you. And you can definitely have two vapor and one uh, vapor ring at one time. The next geometry is uh, diffusive homogeneous volume and also diffusive heterogeneous volumes. To create those, you need to have two sets of pulling and pushing fan as of the bottom and the top of the volume. And you have also have to have regulation, regulator volumes in between to regulate the openings of the vapor. There's two main things that affect the shape of those vo uh, vapor voxel volumes. One is that the materiality on the boundary, the other is this regular, regulator shape that controls the openings of the vapor. If you have a metal net of the boundary, then you can create this kind of rotation. If you have paper at boundary, then it penetrates super fast. And then if you have a cotton sheet, very interesting phenomenon will start to happen, which is it always keep a certain distance in between to create this kind of world. Yeah. And then using regulator forms to control the openings of the vapor, you can have multiple different um, vapor voxel. In this case, we are creating different slopes or different wedge. By using, different, uh, by using the similar mechanism, you can also create vapor walls at different height and different shape. And you can also manipulating, manipulate the outer rim rotation to control the trend and also the size of the vapor wall, even the density. Sometimes you don't even know who is playing with you. So with all those kind of programmable vapor geometries, you can imagine a future where architects can not only shape the form of architecture, but also the weather inside. To showcase the potential of vapor geometry of this special technology to using architectural space, we did a proposal for Chicago Architectural Biennale. And we use vapor as a technology to modulate visibility and also to create spatial patterns. If you have like 100% density of vapor, basically people will wander along in the exhibition space. If you have 50%, then vapor was well formed form and people will follow certain route. And then if you have 0% where like, there will be a vapor tornado that sucks everything out, people will start to gather around the center space. This is at 100% density of vapor. This is at 0%. And while you are relaxing in the space, you basically are helping to create more vapor material inside the room by pushing out vapor vortex ring. This is at 50%. We also made a proposal for um, Spanish Architectural Festival, where this is becoming a wet space in the dry urban area. This is um, kind of like a sauna in winter, where participants can get inside, and also by sliding the uh, sliding doors, it, actually, it, will it will create this kind of boundary condition that, cr that can create tornadoes. So imagine a future where architects can not only spot forms, but also weather inside. Imagine you can have tropical thunderstorm at one corner to, take a, to help you to take a shower, and also dry up on the other corner like a Sahara desert. Thank you very much. <laughs>